we'll move on to the English Premier League and talk about the employment law uh, considerations for Project Restart. Now, um, I'm, I'm concerned about what's happening in England. To a point, I had, a, I had an argument with a close friend of mine. I said, look, it feels like the English Premier League and the Nigeria professional football, they have something in common. Indecision, like they are not decisive on what exactly they should do. Today they come up with stories about um, uh, the kind of rules that they'll be putting in place on the football pitch for the players to adhere to. Tomorrow they come up with the government saying that they can't kickstart anything sport until the 1st of June. The next they're talking about the championship that um, they will not have any relegation or promotion from the championship. But in the English Premier League, they'll be relegating the last three in the EPL. And Norwich City have come out to um, challenge this um, story that came that broke in the, in, in the news that how can you relegate teams from the English Premier League and not promote teams from the Championship? So a, a whole lot of back and forth has been going on, and I think they have until the first of June to restart the league. What's your take on this? And of course, looking at the legal implication and uh, the employment law considerations for the EPL. Well, uh, first of all, I wouldn't completely agree that um, they've been indecisive when it comes to when it feels that way. Okay, let me tell you why uh, maybe you are feeling that way. Um, the government has put in place regulations and protocols mm -hmm. for combating COVID-19. Mm -hmm. It's not been easy. The figures keep spiking up. The death, um, the mortality rates, rates yeah. keep going up as mm -hmm. well. And everyone is concerned. So there's this uncertainty. So it's a general uncertainty. It's not peculiar to the Premier League. The Premier League is only trying to um, get the backing of the government mm. before it takes any further steps mm. knowing full well that there will be financial ramifications financial and legal ramifications yeah. if they go ahead and restart the league and people uh, players start getting infected and god forbid uh, probably start dying mm. there will be financial ramifications so everyone is being careful so they are watching the situation and that is why the prime minister came out and said okay no footballing activity should come up until 1st of June. June. Now, UEFA has given all the leagues till August to conclude. Mm -hmm. So uh, June is not, it's not a bad time. If they will be able to, they have about nine fixtures left or thereabouts. Mm -hmm. So if they'll be able to accommodate everything, it says six, seven weeks maximum, mm. I'm sure everybody will be fine. But the, the whole concern now is about following through with the protocols. If they're yeah. able to follow through with the protocols, I'm sure everybody will be fine. IFAB came up um, in the penultimate week also to make some changes. Mm. Now teams are allowed a maximum of five, five substitutions, substitutions yeah. um, from the normal three substitutions we used to have. Mm -hmm. Now 23 players on the match day squad and that is uh, more or less an, a, a, an admission that everyone needs to get on board to get this whole thing over the line. Mm -hmm. because. No one knows how this thing, how long this thing is going to be with us. Yes. So I'm sure uh, they will find a way. Mm. When you talk about the Nigerian Premier League, I sincerely don't know why they have not ended the league. Mm. We have <laughs> no commercial sponsorship deal on the line. We have no money to refund to anybody. Mm -hmm. Why are we still keeping quiet? Mm. Most of the teams are already owing player salaries, True. running in two months. Mm -hmm. So what is the LMC doing about it? These are the issues. So if anyone mm. is being indecisive here, I would say is the Nigerian not professional, professional football, football league, league. not the EPL. Mm. Okay, now still looking at uh, the English Premier League now, of course, uh, I'll look at um, the consideration from left, right and centre. And uh, like you rightly mentioned, yes, the clubs are actually looking um, to the government to have to meet at a midpoint and uh, know when exactly the leagues will start. But looking at the players, for example, some of the players are actually scared of getting back to football. Man City striker Aguero said he's not sure if he wants to play. Brian Sterling as well said he doesn't think it is safe for us to resume football anytime soon. Norwich City players are complaining. They are even complaining about the position they are in the EPO that how can we play football with our fans because we are battling relegation and they need the fans to support them all through to help them win these games, the remainder of the, uh, the games for the season, to see them secure, uh, to, 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 be, to be safe from being relegated from the English Premier League. So a whole lot of, I, I think it's a top of situation right, right there in the English Premier League. Players are concerned. The officials want to get back to playing. If they don't get to finish the league, a huge lot of money, a huge sum of money will be paid because of TV coverage, which hasn't covered the time that they've actually um, 
the contract now, I think there's a breach in contract. You talked about the force majeure uh, that was last, last week. And I'm saying there's no sentiment in football. A deal is a deal. They have to pay Definitely. what they owe. But is there any um, employment law consideration looking at the English Premier League, looking at the non-playing staff, what do you think will happen to these guys? Okay. Um, first of all, the issue about restarting the league, mm. again, I'm going to speak as an analyst and speak as a fan. Yeah, because there are actually two, yes. two different sentiments. Definitely. Mm. From a fan's perspective, I yeah. want to see the league back on television. Definitely. From an analyst's perspective, um, I want to be more careful about the protocols being put in place to Definitely. safeguard the players. But have you ever asked yourself this question? How many of these players complaining have told their clubs to stop paying their salaries? Mm. For this period that the league has been on, on break, mm. how many of them have actually come up, walked up to the clubs and say, you know what, freeze my salary? Now, there was a, there was a point when a discussion was held about possibly um, deferring the wages of the players, not even reduction or cancellation yeah. of the wages, deferring the wages, which means that they can earn it in future. Later. Many of them refused. Now they're saying, get back to the pitch and play. You say, no, that you have safety considerations. Why mm. didn't you have safety considerations mm, when the lads was entering every weekend? Mm. So it, it's, it's something that we need to create a balance. Now, what is the financial ramification if the league is not completed? It's very obvious. The, the, because of the collective broadcasting model, TV broadcasting model, the EPL is practicing, mm. each of these teams would disgorge about 740 million pounds, pounds. Wow. collectively. That's what they will pay back to the broadcast sponsors. And because these monies had been disbursed ahead of time uh, by the Premier League to most of these teams, they will have to pay from their coffers. Mm -hmm. So how would they be able to survive? So it's about the commercial consideration mm. that most of these teams are saying, OK, you know what, let's get back. But what befuddles me is the fact that the players were not consulted when this decision was being taken. I, I was expecting a collective decision on it. Now, let's go to the employment aspect of it. Mm -hmm. What are the employment considerations? It is very, very simple. Uh, the first employment law principle is that uh, the, what they call the work wage per game. Now, the players are under contract with their individual clubs. Mm -hmm. So they are regulated by the regular um, employment law principles. Now, this principle is hinged on the work wage per game. In other words, uh, the players, um, in consideration for training and playing for the clubs, they are being paid, paid wages and other remuneration. Mm. Now, when a player refuses to play or refuses to train, there are ramifications. Apart from being an unreasonable refuser, mm. amounting to a reasonable refuser to work, it could also be tantamount to a misconduct. Sure. Now, most of these clubs have their individual uh, disciplinary policies, so which stipulate the punishment that can be meted out to any such player. So if the players renege on this agreement, the players will most likely be sanctioned with fines. Mm -hmm. Now, um, stories came out in the penultimate week about the decision of the English, so most of the English Premiership clubs and mm -hmm. rugby clubs also to issue disclaimers to their players to sign. That disclaimer is a, is a, is a document disclaiming liability mm -hmm. that in the event of physical harm resulting from training or playing, that the club will not be responsible for certain financial penalties. Yeah. Now, you look at the, what are the rights of the players. The Employment Rights Act of um, 1996 governs the relationship between the players and this EPL clause, being an employment law contract. Mm. Now, under Section 44 of that Act, it provides that no player or no employee shall be put to any detriment arising from a consideration of the fact that such an employee um, has, um, uh, because of a perception of an imminent and serious danger, taken reasonable steps that will protect him or her from harm, mm. or even others. So no punishment shall be visited on such a player. Mm. Now, if you read that, Section 100 now goes on to say that any player or any employee who is visited with such detriment or punishment, mm -hmm. that that act 
shall amount to an unfair dismissal. Wow. Now, if it amounts to unfair dismissal, the player will be liable to be paid some damages by the club mm -hmm. if it's challenged. Now, you look at the corresponding, other corresponding obligations of the club and the players. The player, on the one hand, has an obligation to train and play. Now, what if a player, like you rightly mentioned, Aguero, yesterday it was Troy Dini, and yeah. uh, there was one other player that also came up and said, oh, that, that he's not returning, that he's mm -hmm. not even returning. <laughs> uh, uh, this Tottenham player, um, Danny Rose. Oh, yeah, Danny Rose also Danny complained. Rose came, was, came up yeah. and complained as well. So now, what, what if they make good their threats mm. by refusing to play or train? Now, most of the standard clauses in the Premier League contracts stipulate that a player shall be, re shall be ready, except, except to the um, limitations placed by injuries or illnesses, that a player shall have the right to, or have the obligation to maintain physical fitness mm. at all times and shall not indulge in any practice, act, or uh, sports that would inhibit his training. His training. Mm. Now, a player can come up and say that uh, because of the um, relevant protocols and regulations on social distancing put in place by the government, that this duty to train is inconsistent mm. with that particular obligation on their part to train. So if a player makes such allegations and uh, goes ahead to also invoke the whistleblowing provisions under the Employment Rights Act, such a player would definitely be able to escape liability from um, from, from that obligation yeah. of training and mm -hmm. playing. Wow. So the club, on the other hand, if they make good their intention to have the player sign disclaimers, that document will be void by virtue of the Unfair Contract Terms Act of 1977. Mm. That Unfair Contract Terms Act, when you exclude financial, um, exclude uh, the payment of financial liability or bearing financial liability mm. for any personal injury, accruing or um, being visited upon a player, that particular, that particular document will be void by virtue of Section 1, Sub 1 mm. of that Unfair Contract Terms Act. Mm. Now, there's another corresponding obligation on the part of the club, the obligation to insure the players. Okay. Now, most of these insurance policies, I, I, I would imagine they don't contain a pandemic. Mm -hmm. If they don't contain a pandemic, it becomes a little bit problematic. Wow. Now, um, for you to top up the insurance policies, you definitely have to pay additional premium. Mm -hmm. So when you pay additional premium, uh, I'm not sure most of the clubs, because of what is happening right now, I'm not sure most of the clubs will be able to pay that. Yeah. So, and it was even a criminal offense under the law in the UK if you don't insure the players. Mm -hmm. So looking at this whole thing, I, I don't think it will be ill-advised on the part of the clubs to compel these players to sign these agreements. Mm -hmm. Because the moment you do that, not only will that act be void, you are opening yourself to liability, even on capped compensation under the relevant employment uh, laws and statutes mm -hmm. All right. of England. Uh, so. You know, you can actually call in to make your contribution on what we've talked about so far. Remember we mentioned the US Women National Team, where they've, all, they've come out to um, Get, they've gone to court for them to earn equal pay with the men and of course the court has said no the the situation has suffered a setback and also we talked about the german bundesliga returning today what's your take on football returning to uh, for, uh viewing screens and the english Premier league what are those uh, employment law concentration for project restart calling to the show 0906 triple zero five seven one nine still staying with the english Premier league now uh, i like the points you've made so far and uh, Yes, no player should be compelled to come back to play football. I think it was Burnley coach who mentioned that he would, he would respect his players' decision if they decide not to play. But I don't think the FA, would there be punishment if a particular club, because there was a time I heard, I think it's a rumor, that if any club decides not to play, they'll send that, that club packing from the EPL. So is there any um, rule, that's, is there any sanction that will fall on the club if the players decide not to play? That's one, for example. Then if another club now, because there are cases of coronavirus in the, uh, among some of the players, if a particular club has, um, the corona, has about 10 players affected by coronavirus, are they justified not to play in the English family? What do you think will happen to those clubs? Okay, let me start with your last question. Um, 
the player, the clubs have 25 registered players, right? Mm -hmm. They have 25 registered players and 10 players get infected. So you have 15 players. What if, what if 15 have the virus if and they have only 10? Okay. Um, these are hypothetical situations. Yeah. I, don't, I don't imagine they will ever happen. Mm. But if they do happen, um, one of the, the, the prevailing jurisprudence mm. from FIFA on this whole point is that the team, in fact, the team will be sanctioned. Mm. There was one case where the team, um, I think it was um, uh, Salif, Salif Diao and um, um, Club African of okay. Tunisia, where the club could not, the club could not honour a match because all their first team players uh, were having gastroenteritis. Okay. So they couldn't honour a, a, a match, and um, they came to activate a force majeure under the club rules, under the association's rules, mm -hmm. that it was a force majeure event, and therefore that they should not be punished. They were punished. Wow. They were punished for not showing up for that match. So, uh, but this is an exceptional situation because it is a pandemic. Okay. What happened in that case, in Club African case, is not a pandemic. So, this one is a pandemic. What might happen is that the club, might, the uh, FA, might just look and say, okay, let us reschedule your match in future. Mm. Watch the players, quarantine them, and see what happens. So, that is the best way to go about it. Mm. Otherwise, um, the... Ordinary thing to do is to what we call in local parlance, walk them over, walk them over, exactly. award three points to the, other, to the other team. So that is what they will do. Then um, about the other other question about the clubs, whether there is a punishment for the clubs, not or the players not honouring a match. Mm. Now that is dependent on the individual disciplinary policies of the clubs. Like I said earlier, they have their own individual disciplinary policies. Mm. These are. Uh, appendices to the contracts of the players mm -hmm. that they signed. So refusal to play or train, like I said, uh, can amount to a disciplinary, con mis disciplinary conduct. Mm. So a misconduct, sorry. So that disciplinary misconduct would probably attract a fine or some other sanction. But again, look, looking at it, regardless of the internal arrangement that they have, such players would have a right to actually challenge what the club and the FA is doing under the Employment Rights Act except there will be some kind of collective bargaining agreement that they will enter with the PFA and say, okay, please, uh, this is the situation. We need you to compel your members to um, enter the pitch and go and play. Mm -hmm. We have a dire situation on our, on our hands. We either play this game, finish this season, or we run the risk of disgorging over 740 million uh, pounds. Now, I'm sure the players who don't want to lose their jobs, you don't want to sure. get back next season and see that, oh, that your club can is going into administration. administration. So no one wants that.